Hey guys, Chris Leifert here with Psychotherapy Networker. I'm the assistant editor at the Networker. Uh, welcome back to yet another Facebook Live video. This is our fourth of the day, Creativity Day. Uh, we're feeling generous, so we're giving you uh, quite, a, quite a few videos today. I'm here with Mary Jo Barrett. She's a Networker veteran. Uh, she's presenting this weekend at the symposium. Mary Jo, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks, Chris. Sure. So Mary Jo is a uh, trauma specialist. Um, Mary Jo, why don't you tell me a little bit about your work and what you do? Okay. Well, first of all, I'm from Chicago, okay. and uh, I think this is my 34th networker, so veteran is an understatement. Um, and the work I do is that I started about 40 years ago in, in the field of trauma. Mm -hmm. 40 years ago, we didn't call it trauma. So 40 years ago, I would say what, what we were, the work we were really doing was interpersonal violence. We were focusing on child abuse and sexual abuse and domestic violence and and that's what's evolved into where we call it trauma kind of as a catchphrase. Mm -hmm. What I think most of us as therapists when we really look at it the the clients we see that we would say have suffered from complex complex trauma because mm -hmm. complex trauma means it's a repetitive trauma that you've that you've experienced over the years, mm -hmm. over the life cycle, through your developmental phases. And I would, I would venture to say that most of that trauma, most of that abuse or neglect mm -hmm. happened in, within a context of a relationship mm -hmm. where there was a person in a position of power mm -hmm. who was also in a position of attachment that violated the the person of lesser pass uh, lesser power and yet they were still in a position so whether that was physically abused by a spouse or a partner sexually by a parent or an uncle or a priest or a you know even a, a boy scout leader what sure. whatever it is that's really most of the trauma I've ever worked in and I'd venture a guess the trauma that most therapists deal with okay so great I want to add, for those of you out there um, in Facebook land, uh, this is a Facebook Live video. If you have questions along the way for Mary Jo, um, feel free to send them our way. We'll be checking periodically throughout the interview, and um, Mary Jo will be happy to answer them. So um, question number two, I guess we'll just jump right in. <laughs> Until somebody else asks, we'll just answer your questions. There we go, <laughs> yeah. Um, what's, what's new in the trauma field? So what, what's, uh, what should therapists who are getting into the field now know that maybe isn't in their grad school textbooks? Um, well, let's see. That's a really, that's an interesting question. I think the first thing that comes to mind is that we're living in kind of a constant state of trauma mm -hmm. in terms of the political world, mm -hmm. in terms of what's happening in our country, what's happening all over the world. Uh, this constant state of threat, whether it's gun violence, whether it's murder uh, in our in our neighborhoods whether it's terrorism there we live in a constant state of threat mm -hmm. you know I, I read this morning that I think one out of three and I'm make, maybe making it up high schoolers worry about gun violence you know oh. and that the world's less safe I'm not mm -hmm. sure that's true but because of all the media and the internet the and we it feels less safe because we know things within seconds, right? So I'd say what's happening is, when I look at trauma, it's it's both, and, and you and I've talked about this in the articles, you know, I think what's really about trauma is that a person is rendered by the relationship or the context, they're rendered powerless, mm -hmm. out of control, mm -hmm. sort of disconnected from themselves and from others, and they feel really devalued. Yeah. You'll see this in your office. Yeah, I see it in the office. I know I've mentioned to you about all the work I'm doing on the south side of Chicago with mm -hmm. gangs. Yeah. You know, it's it's whether I'm a an individual that was sexually abused as a child or or sexually harassed by my boss or a gang member who's who's lived in what we call, you know, the urban prisoners of war because they've lived in this this demeaning, devaluing, impoverished community. Mm -hmm. It's all about being powerless, out of control, and devalued. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people in the world feel that. And so what? So what's new is that it's this constant state, I think, mm -hmm. whether it's our history, it's also the world we're living in. And so it's this constant state of 
hypervigilance, mm -hmm. this constant state of, am I valued as a human being? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what, how does that make it new for us in terms of treatment is, I, I think we need to look at things a little bit more contextually mm -hmm. and less individual or intrapsychic of what this did. It, it, even in terms of the neuropsych, it, mm -hmm. it is true trauma changes your brain. And right. it is true that when I read something, my body gets dysregulated. Mm -hmm. I think we have to broaden the lens, though. It, it's sure. not just what's going on inside. It's what's going on in relationships. Mm -hmm. And it, it's re our relationships in our community, our mm -hmm. relationships to the greater world and the universe, and our relationships in our home, in sure. our family. Sure. And I don't think the trauma field does enough mm -hmm systemic and contextual work. I don't, and, and our clients are telling us, help me with my family, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. help me with my partners, help me with my children, help me with my bosses. Mm -hmm. I've had clients, and I they're, talked about it in one of the articles recently, is that I have clients that with all the Me Too, it's really impacting them. Yeah. So here's stuff on the news that they're thinking, wow, I never talked about what happened with my father and what about my partner or what about my neighbor who's sexualizing me, that I think we don't do enough relationship therapy. I sure. think we're pretty technique driven, mm -hmm. you know, and we're very, and they're all good skills. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, I'm mm -hmm. saying it's an and. Okay. It's, so that, we need that, to do more. Like the group therapy is, in your experience, more effective in treating trauma than one-on-one, -on -one or uh, more depends effective. on the case? I think sure, if you're really going to treat trauma, you have to treat all the areas mm -hmm. that a person feels powerless and devalued. Mm -hmm. okay. And so group is an important piece. Mm -hmm. Family is an important piece. Individual skills for regulation. It mm -hmm. really is an integrated model. If we're yeah. really going to have effective successful trauma mm -hmm. treatment, it's got to be integrated. It yeah. can't, if, you know, I always say this to people, Chris, if there was one way to treat trauma, like mm -hmm. a one great intervention, one great model, mm -hmm. wouldn't we all be doing it? Yeah. But it's not, because you have to look at the nature of what the trauma was, mm -hmm. how trauma, the, the powerlessness and devalued that the person's living in right now, mm -hmm. and we have to integrate all of their, their experience. Sure. We, all human be beings live in three contexts. Mm -hmm. We live in a com the social community, our tribe, mm -hmm. right? We all live in or have families, and we all live inside our bodies. Yeah. And good trauma treatment has to have intervention on all three contexts. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Mary Jo. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for being with us.